Let the church say amen. amen. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Are you happy to be back in the house of the Lord? Yes. Let us give the Lord a rousing hand clap. Amen. Good morning, Father. We've come into this place to adore you, to worship you, to magnify you, to bring glory to your name. We ask, O oh God, that you would now forgive us of anything that would impede our entering into your presence. Thank you for the angels that you have positioned around us. Thank you for how they watched over us last night and brought us to this morning, to this place in Jesus' name. We now ask, O oh God, for the intervention of your Holy Spirit. We ask, O oh God, that you would manifest yourself as you and only you know how to do. Whether you're here in this sacred space that we call the sanctuary, whether or not you're on the sanctuary of the internet, whether or not, O oh God, you're in our homes, our places of business, in our automobiles as we go about our business, we ask for your presence. Make yourself known now the way that only you know how to do and make us receptive to that which you choose to do. Bless your preacher. Let his ears be to your mouth that he may hear what it is the Spirit wants to say to the church. Our ears are open and our eyes are open, waiting to hear from you. Now be glorified, if you will, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our morning hymn is King of My Life. I crown thee now.
lest I forget Gethsemane. Amen. We're happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And this morning, the announcement, we'd like to encourage our pastors away for a while that we ask all the members to keep him in prayer, him and his family, while he's away, that he may have a blessed stay wherever he is and be a blessing to others. Amen. And the announcements this morning, well, yesterday, Sister Betty Thomas had some ailment that had to be taken to the hospital and was on the respirator and all that. But praise God, the good news this morning, that she's off of the respirator. <laughs> Amen. The Lord, the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. the name of the Lord. We thank, we thank you. Thank you for your prayers and let us keep Sister Thomas in prayer still, you know, and keep in mind what the scripture said, that the official fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much. Amen. And we need prayer everywhere we look. We need prayer all over the world today. So let us keep in prayer. We'd like to encourage everyone tomorrow morning, if you can, to join us in uh, Monday morning with the Master at 8.30 in the morning. Please join us. It is a delightful time, a wonderful time to be in the presence of the Lord during that hour. And then on Wednesday evening, the uh, Sunday school class will convene Sunday school review at, uh, at uh, 8.15 for, on Wednesday evening. Let us all join in with our Sunday school class on Wednesday evening. And also, uh, I would like to say that on yesterday, there was an occasion at the church, and there was some leftovers, cupcakes. And they will be passed out. They will be available after service. They may be in the lobby. If not, they will be next door. You will be directed which way to go at that time. Thank you. And as I said, let us keep our prayer, pastor in prayer. And, uh, and while he's away, let us all keep in prayer. And remember our bereaved families among us as well. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our visitors, our guests who may be in with us this morning. Do we have any guests in with us this morning? If you would. Thank you. You may be seated. We would like to say uh, we welcome you 
in the, in the name of the Lord to this branch of Zion. And if you would happen to be looking for a church home or have recently relocated to uh, the city of Palm Coast, we pray for that you would consider the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Because our motto here is, you may find churches bigger, but you will not find any better than the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. And they shall know that we are Christian by our love. Bless you. We are delighted to have you in with us this morning. And at this time, we'll ask the deacon to come forth and we'll continue in the worship service, in the giving of our tithes and offering, the deacon. you come around, come around with a smile on your face and with pep in your step. For the scripture said, God loves a cheerful gift. that have been received from the hands and the hearts of your people. We pray that you will bless them, multiply them, cause them to do supernaturally that that you would have them do in this, the house of God, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the givers. Thank you, O oh God, for those who stand to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Put those hands together.
determined to walk on to see what the air is going to be, just shout hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. It's my privilege this morning to introduce our preacher. Our preacher this morning is a multi-gifted man, Florida-based inspirational jazz musician. Bruce Allen is best known for his collaboration with the dynamic duo Allen and Allen, comprised of Alan Wiggins on saxophone and Bruce Allen on piano. They have received many accolades over the years, including winning the coveted Stellar Award twice. Most recently, he won the Wayman, uh, the equally coveted Wayman Tisdale Jazz Award. Allen and Allen uh, has released 10 different projects over the life of their career. Their musical endeavors paused as <coughs> both Allens served as pastors of different churches in different cities. Both, in fact, have been consecrated as bishops in the Lord's Church, all to find themselves working together for three years. Since then, Reverend Bruce has moved on exploring other ventures in Jacksonville, Florida. Born in East St. Louis, Illinois, his talent awarded him opportunities far more than one could imagine. Graduating from Bethune-Cookman University with a bachelor's degree, hey, 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 with a bachelor's degree in business administration, then later earning his master of organizational management, he immediately began to soar in the music industry. Performing at Carnegie Hall, touring and opening for gospel greats, such as Yolanda Adams, and even sharing the stage with jazz saxophonist Boney James. Somebody say amen. amen. Currently attending Open Arms Community Church, where Bishop Leofric Thomas is the senior pastor, he is married to his lovely wife, A. Renita, with two children, Bruce Jaila and Candice Freddie. For those who've been waiting, Bishop Allen is currently in the studio recording the solo release of a long-awaited smooth jazz album. After the ensemble has ministered to us in song, after the sons and daughters of Asaph have escorted us into the presence of the Lord, the uh, next voice that we will hear will be that of pastor's comrade and colleague. He's here, Pastor, Bishop Ruth V. Allen. Hear ye him.
just a moment, just a moment. Come on, come on, let's put our hands together and bless them. I know I'm in the right church. I know I am, I know I am because I get excited when I walk in a church that gets excited about God's healing hand. Amen. When, 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 they, when they said that God uh, 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 healed the, 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 the young lady that's in the hospital and you got excited about it, I said, that's it. I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. Come on, look at somebody and say, I'm in the right place this morning. I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. Place. I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. You may take your seats. You may take your seats. I am glad. I am honored to be here one more time. Amen. If I come again, I'm going to just uh, take my place in the seats. Say, I'm a member. <laughs> yeah, 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 we thank God, we thank God. Uh, we want to first give an honor to God, to who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And, uh, we do bring you greetings from Open Arms Church, where uh, Bishop Leofric Thomas and Lady Sandy serves as our pastor and first lady. And I want to say... I thank God for my first lady. Yeah, yeah, Sister Renita. Amen. 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 I thank God for her, and I thank God for this choir. Amen. This choir just taking us, amen, taking us into heaven. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. And I want to thank God for my good friend, amen, and brother. Pastor Eddie Coffey, yeah. amen, and Lady Coffey, amen, for inviting us, and uh, I, I spoke to him the other day, and he told me, man, it's been a long time since I've had a vacation, it's been a long time, so we, we, we just uh, said to him, man, go on and enjoy yourself, y'all go on and have a good time, put your feet up on the table. Amen. Amen. And uh, thank God for, for you, Mount Calvary, for just extending your kind reception to me. Amen. Amen. But now it's time for me to get to my assignment. Amen. So I want to uh, ask you to turn with me to the book of Jude. The book of Jude. Jude is the, the book right before you get to Revelation. And it's a little short book, it's a little short book, but it has some power in it. <laughs> yeah, 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 the book of Jude, one chapter, amen. And we're going to notice, if you would stand with me uh, for the reading of God's word, we're going to read verse 3 and 4, then we're going to skip down to verse 24, Jude 3 and 4. And 24. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign Lord. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. I want to speak to you this morning from this, uh, the topic, uh, stay on the watch. 
Come on, look at somebody and tell them to stay on the watch. Stay on the watch. Stay on the watch. Thank you. You may take your seats. This morning, let us take a look at what Jude, the brother of Jesus, has to say about dealing with apostasy creeping into our churches. Apostasy is an act of refusing to continue to follow or recognize the faith. Although Jude was eager to write about salvation, about the salvation that, that they shared, he was urged by the Holy Spirit to write to them about the spirit of apostasy that had slipped in among the saints. Uh, verse 4 says, for certain men whose condemnation was written about, written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. <laughs> Jude followed the urging of the Holy Spirit over his anxiousness to speak about the common salvation that saved both he and them. Let, let, let me pause here just to say that those of us who are speaking to the people of God must make sure that our ear is positioned at the mouth of God so that we speak what he tells us. We, we, we are living, we are, we are living in critical times and, and, and what God is saying to his people is too strategic. Uh, it's too timely for us to miss out on what God is saying because of something that's on our agenda to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. J Jude says that these apostates have slipped in among you. <laughs> That, that, that suggests uh, 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 that those uh, evil people have purposely disguised themselves so that they can look like you. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they come in and they dressed like you. Uh, uh, they come in and they smell just like you. They can say hallelujah, praise God, just like you. Yeah, yeah. You, you know the old adage of uh, 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 a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, that comes from the story of wolves killing sheep and getting the scent of the sheep on their bodies so that they can get in close to other sheep for the kill. Yeah, well, uh, this is the aim of the enemy in terms of trying to destroy the plan of the Almighty God. He, he knows that if he tries to come in uh, as the devil, he will be recognized and the saints will pray and resist him. But if he can disguise himself as one of us, he has a chance of getting in and then uh, reaping havoc on the inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. J just as Jude was speaking to the people of God, then he, he is speaking to the church today. The people of God uh, have been infiltrated by the darkness of the presence of Satan himself. When, when you see Christians fighting against one another, you know that Satan has infiltrated the minds of God's people. Uh, uh, when, when you see Christians acting out of their godly character, you know that Satan has infiltrated the minds of God's people. Jude gives us uh, uh, two characteristics to identify these godless, irreverent apostates in, in verses 15 and 16, and I'll, I'll be out of your way. Uh, uh, first of all, he says, they were perverting God's grace. You, you heard me say that in verse 4. Con conversely, Jude was saying that the people of God were taking sin as a passive act. Yeah, 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 people taking sin as a passive act. Now, don't, don't get too, too quiet on me because I'm talking about sin. I, I said sin and everybody shut up. 
They, they were sinning, and because of God's grace, as they would have it, they were free to do anything that they wanted to do. In, in verse 15, uh, 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 Jude says this, and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness. Paul addresses this kind of behavior in Romans 6, 1 and 2. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that the grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what this means to me is that we're lost. We've lost all sensitivity to sin. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, and I, I just want to ask you a question. Is, is this what you think our Lord and Savior came and died for us to do, just for us to do anything we want to do? Uh, I believe not. We, we've got to be aware of the sin we commit and ask for God's forgiveness when we commit sins in our lives. And he is faithful and just to forgive us. Yeah, yeah, 1 John 1 and 9. Yeah, yeah, Paul says in, in Galatians 5, 16 and 17, so I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe that we are living in the last days of this dispensation. That, that's just me. That's what I believe. Uh, and this passage says, in essence, that, that we, the people of God, should not do whatever we want to do, but we should be led by the Spirit in accomplishing what he wants to do. Yeah, yeah, but, but in these days, we have to fight against the desires and wants of evil. Uh, not only do we see the spirit of the enemy uh, slip in among the church, but, but we see the spirit of the enemy moving throughout our political arena locally and globally. Yeah, yeah. Here in America, our political parties are jockeying for power with little or no regards to human rights and well-being of human citizenship. All that they seem to care about is who has rule of power at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, you see them, you see them arguing. With they, they, they argue every day on the news. We don't even want to watch the news. Uh, uh, on the in international scene, we see President Putin ruling with a steel hand of hate against the Ukrainians. He aims to take control of a land of people regardless of their beliefs and practices. I, I don't know if you know this, but U Ukraine is primarily a, a Christian country. It's about 71% Christians, and, and Russia is run by a godless dictator. Uh, uh, he has no respect for God, nor God's people. He, he, he will kill millions of innocent people just to fulfill uh, his evil, sadistic agenda. But Jude tells the people of God to contend for the faith that, that was once for all entrusted to the saints. We, we, we are watching in real time the Ukrainians contend for their faith in God. We should do all that we can to stand, to stand with them in this critical time. Yeah, yeah, the second characteristic of this godless person was rejecting God's son. Jude says in, in the latter part of, of the 15th verse, he says, and all and of all the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against 
him, meaning Jesus Christ. You, you better be careful when you're talking to people about Jesus and their words about Christ is very bitter towards the Prince of Peace. Yeah, yeah, I, I tell you, you better, be, you better be careful when you're talking to those people. They, they want to tell you that, that, that there are many ways to heaven. Yeah, yeah, you've heard them. And, and, and that you can use any religious jargon to get you into the gates of heaven. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you, you've got to take a stand to let them know that there is but one way to enter the pearly gates of heaven. There, there's a, you, you've got to take a stand. You can't be, be quiet. You can't sit back and be quiet. You've got to take a stand. And, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's, uh, through the, the, that's through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Bible says in John 10, 7, then Jesus said unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you are a Christian today, one of the first things you learn to never renounce Christ. No, no, you never renounce Christ. If you are looking for a telltale sign of knowing a person has received Christ into their heart, ask them, do they acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life? Yeah, yeah, just ask them, just ask them. Do they acknowledge God? Uh, let, 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 let us look into this verse a little closer. Uh, the Greek word for against is kata, which means down from or throughout. So the enemy has disliked or had something negative to say about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ throughout the ages. Let me ask you a question. How can I get through the gates of heaven without knowing the one who owns the gates? <laughs> come on, come on now, come on now, come on. <laughs> uh, uh, listen, I, I, our words may get defiant sometimes, but our words should never deny the grace of God he has so freely given us. Don't allow the enemy to trick you so that you begin to say negative things out of your mouth against the master of your soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, the, the enemy is shrewd and cares nothing about the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he don't care nothing about Jesus. Y your obligation in this moment of time is to know that Jesus is the keeper of your soul, and it is to him that you commit yourself. N know know that, that the enemy is lurking, trying to infiltrate your life by any means necessary. He is trying to make it seem if, as if God doesn't care about you. He, he's trying to make it seem uh, 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 that, that uh, to make it seem like God has forgotten about you. Uh, uh, he wants to, 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 to he wants you to feel like God has turned his back on you. But 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 what the scripture tells you in Deuteronomy 8 and 31, it says, the Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. He, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. It reminds me of an old hymn that says, no, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. D don't miss what the scripture says. The Lord himself goes before you. Uh, th this is super important to us for us to get. The, the Lord goes before us and, and proverbially wipes out anything that, that, that the enemy has planted and or set for us to, to, uh, so that, that, that we can experience true success without fear. We have an obligation 
to continuously place our trust in God because he is the one that can keep us stable in unstable situations. He is the one that calls my fears to subside so that I can rely on his faithfulness. I am nothing without him, but I am completely armed with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Notice what Jude said in, 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 in the 24th verse, 24th verse, uh, uh, concluding this argument. He says, to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and without with great joy. Yeah, yeah, did you hear him? Jude talks about the ableness of Jesus. How many people know that God is able? Yeah, yeah, God is able. Paul echoes this same thought over in Ephesians 3.20 when he says, Now unto him who is what? Able to do. Th this word able uh, uh, in the Greek is dunamai, and, and which means to be capable. It means to be strong. It means to be powerful. I, I believe the point that God is stressing to all believers is that it doesn't matter what the issue is that pre that befronts you. God, is, uh, who is, is able, is bigger than anything. Uh, he's bigger than all things and has gone before you and wiped out the effect of the enemy's plans for you. Uh, your God has uh, the capability to outweigh anything with this glorious presence of all of Satan's attacks against me. Notice the scripture says, without Fault. Oh, God. That means that God has 100% guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nobody else can, 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 can guarantee you 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's never lost a case. He's never lost a patient because he's the Lord over everything. And on that day, when I, I have to give an account of all the deeds done in this body. I'm glad to know the one I've placed my trust in, though I, though I will have some scars, uh, he has the power to present me scarless. Yeah, yeah, though I have some shortcomings in my life, uh, he will present me without shortcomings. Uh, yeah, yeah, isn't anybody in here that's with me this morning? Though I have some sins in my life, God will present me sinless. I am glad to know what I'm when I'm presented, I will be presented as a perfect lamb of God. Yeah, yeah, holy and acceptable unto God. Uh, uh, that's all I came to tell you today, that you got to stay on the watch because God, he will present you faultless before his presence. I know the times we live in are unstable. Yeah, but you got to stay on the watch. Yeah, yeah. Look at somebody and tell them to stay on the watch. Yeah, yeah. I know it seems like the devil is winning. Yeah, yeah. But but I got to stay on the watch. Tell somebody, stay on the watch. Yeah. I know you may get tired sometimes, but you, you, you must stay on the watch, my brothers and my sisters. You got to stay on the watch. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't care what happens. Uh, I don't care what the devil does. Uh, you got to stay on the watch because there are some uh, evil people trying to slip in among you. Uh, they're trying to tell you things that are not true. Uh, they're trying to make you believe things that are not what the Bible says. You got to stay 
stay on the watch. Yeah, for the word of God, God declares, now unto him. Yeah, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Uh, that means that God is going to be happy. He's going to be glad to present me uh, as a, with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Bye-bye now, Mount, Mount Calvary. God is going to be on your side. God is going to be right there. God is going to stay with you. God is going to be right there to lift you up, to take you higher, to put his arms around you. Yes, yes, yes. Stay on the watch, my brother. Stay on the watch, my sister, because God is able. He's able. I tell you, he's able. He's able to do whatever you can't do. The Lord is able. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's able. He's able, I tell you. He's able to stay on the watch. God is able. God is able. God is able. God is able. He can do anything. He can do anything. He can do anything but fail. Yeah, 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 yeah. God can do it. So stay on the watch. God bless you. Let the church say amen. amen. We wish to thank the messenger this morning for encouraging us to stay on the watch. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Al. At this time, we're going to open the doors of the church. If there's anyone here this morning who may find yourself out of the ark of safety, you may come at this time, or you may be looking for a church home. You may come at this time. The doors of the church are now open. Lord, keep me day by day. If you are standing in the need of prayer on social media this morning, you may call 386-447-5719. There are intercessors standing by to lead you in the word of prayer. Is there anyone this morning? Where you come?
Again, I would like to say thank you, Reverend Allen, for that powerful word this morning. It was a blessing to us. Thank you.